What if I told you that with targeted exercises, you could eliminate pain from trochanteric bursitis and gluteal tendinopathy? I'm gonna show you an incredibly effective hip rehabilitation program. It's designed to not only address pain, but also to enhance mobility and improve function. The goal is to restore your quality of life and empower you to confidently pursue your passions without restrictions. Hey everyone, Dr. Jeff Pang here. This hip rehabilitation program is designed to be done three times a week for at least six weeks. Commit to the program and you will see significant improvements to strength, range of motion, balance, coordination, and functional abilities. Okay, so the first problem we need to address is hip muscle tightness. Repetitive friction leads to local inflammation at the IT band and degeneration of gluteal tendons. So we'll start with two simple stretches to improve mobility and reduce tension along the outside of the hip. The first exercise is a standing IT band stretch. Begin by standing on the affected leg and then cross your other leg in front of it. Gently allow the hip of the affected leg to drop outwards away from the body. Lean your upper body slightly towards the opposite side to increase the stretch. You should feel an extending sensation along the hip and side of the affected leg. Maintain this position for 30 seconds and then repeat it on the other side. The next exercise is the 90-90 glute stretch that will target the gluteus medius and gluteus minimus muscles. Start by sitting on the floor. Bend both knees to create 90 degree angles with each leg. Ensure you're sitting upright. Then, gently lean forward from your hips moving towards your front thigh. You should feel a stretch in the back of your hips where the gluteal muscles are located. Hold this position for 30 seconds and then repeat it on the other side. Next, we're gonna focus on strengthening exercises. One of the causes of pain at the outside of the hip is gluteal tendinopathy. This is caused by repetitive friction leading to microtrauma and degeneration of the gluteus medius and gluteus minimus tendons. Strengthening the muscles around the pelvis will help build stability and support the hip and leg. The first exercise is the body weight squat. This is excellent for targeting the lower body, particularly the quadriceps, hamstrings, glutes, and calves. Stand with your feet shoulder width apart. Extend your arms straight out in front of you to help with balance. Slowly bend your knees to lower your body, keeping your back straight and your core engaged. Aim to lower until your thighs are parallel to the floor. If you experience pain, you can start off by doing half squats, stopping midway, and then gradually progressing to a full squat as your pain and mobility improves. Complete two sets of 15 repetitions. You can make this exercise more challenging by holding weights. The next exercise is the straight leg raise. This is designed to strengthen the quadriceps, hip flexors, and abdominal muscles. It can also improve stability and flexibility in the lower back and hips. Start by lying flat on your back and bend your knees with your feet flat on the floor. Then straighten out the affected leg and lift it upwards to an angle of about 45 degrees from the ground. Hold the leg at the top of the movement for a few seconds and then slowly lower the leg back down. Perform two sets of 15 repetitions on each side. The next exercise is the glute hip bridge, which will help strengthen the glutes and provide stability to the leg. Begin by lying on your back with your knees bent and feet flat on the ground, positioned about hip width apart. Keep your arms flat at your sides. Lift your hips, aiming to form a straight line from your shoulders to your knees. At the top of the movement, squeeze your glutes and hold briefly before gently lowering back down. To increase the challenge, consider adding resistance by using a band wrapped around your waist. Perform two sets of 15 repetitions. Next, we have the side lying clamshell. This will target the hip and pelvic muscles. Begin by lying on your side with both your hips and knees bent. Keep your feet together. Then, raise the top knee as high as possible without moving your hips or pelvis. Pause for a moment at the top where you feel maximum engagement in your glutes and then slowly lower the knee back down. To increase the difficulty, consider using resistance bands around your thighs just above the knees. Perform two sets of 15 repetitions on each side. The next exercise is a side-lying leg raise. This focuses on hip abduction, which is great for enhancing hip stability and balance. Lie on your side with your legs straight. Raise the upper leg while maintaining a straight line with your body. 
Aim to lift it about 45 degrees, hold it briefly at the top, and then gently lower it back down. Perform two sets of 15 repetitions on each side. Next, we have the step up. This exercise helps strengthen the lower extremity muscles, improves balance and stability, and addresses strength imbalances between the two legs. Stand in front of a sturdy platform. Step up onto the platform with your injured leg first and then follow with the other leg. Step back down again with the injured leg first. Perform two sets of 15 repetitions on each side. To further challenge yourself, increase the step height or perform the exercise while holding weights. The last exercise is the single leg balance. This helps improve stability, coordination, and lower body strength. Begin by standing on the affected leg on a stable surface. Put your hands on your hips and slowly shift your weight onto one foot. Carefully lift your other foot and raise the leg so that your thigh is as close to parallel to the ground. Hold this position for one minute and then repeat on the other side. As you build more stability, you can make this exercise more challenging by holding weight. Remember, the goal of this rehabilitation program is to eliminate pain and restore function. Commit to this exercise regimen three times a week for at least six weeks, and you will see tremendous improvements. The last thing I want to say is that prevention is also extremely important for everyone with trochanteric bursitis and gluteal tendinopathy. We know these conditions have extremely high recurrence rates and this is because many of their causes are lifestyle related. Make sure you properly warm up before activities, avoid overuse or repetitive strain on the hip, and maintain good hip strength and flexibility. There is also a lot of research to suggest that our overall metabolic health also impacts the body and leads to altered cellular responses and failed healing processes. Factors such as elevated blood sugars, high blood pressure, abnormal cholesterol levels, and increased body fat can all play a role in the development of gluteal tendinopathy. Make sure you are getting proper nutrition by avoiding processed foods and added sugars. Lastly, for those who continue to struggle with pain, you may have been recommended a cortisone injection to try to treat pain and reduce inflammation. But there's something new that I've been doing for my patients and has transformed how people recover from trochanteric bursitis and gluteal tendinopathy. Check out this next video where I'll reveal what it is and show you how we can fix your hip pain for good.